Hello and welcome to the next video in my World's 2022 preview series where we're going to cover my players of interest. The players that I think um, are going to be, you know, given a little more, um, I don't know, love or not even love but attention than others. Uh, the players that I'm going to be like, oh, I'm really excited to see what this player does at this event. Um, so we're going to do that. Down in the description, you see three links, Twitter, Discord, YouTube memberships. Twitter, join me, uh, follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Uh, there will be a watch party for at least day one for the first several, well, few games. Um, no promises. It goes throughout the whole entire thing. Protex is being nice enough to even host any at all, so I appreciate that. Um, and then, uh, you, you know, hang out. Talk about the games in the chat. Uh, and then uh, YouTube memberships, $3 supports me. Um, you get a little badge in the comment section. $10, you get extra content. Uh, you get the badge. Plus, you're going to get an extra video, which later today I'm going to upload for tomorrow. Um, as you can tell, I'm dressed like it was yesterday. This video is being filmed yesterday. Um, I will have my predictions for winners up after the roundup, which are only for people that do the YouTube membership. And then you get fantasy football, American football content as well a couple days a week. So uh, if that interests you, $10. Um, so players of interest, what is this going to be about? It's going to be the players that I'm interested in, right? So I'm going to think about this as I go along here. And if I don't have anybody from your team, I'm sorry, but it's relatively boring to think about. Um, so there may be different reasons for why I have a player on this board. I might just I mean, I guess this is going to be one of my more opinionated videos um, where I just say who I think is going to be interesting to watch. So um, first, I'm going to get some minor region teams out of the way. Robo from Loud is definitely a player I want to pay attention to. As well as Tin Owns. Um, Robo apparently is really cracked. We'll find out. He had a lot of interesting picks throughout summer. Maybe you pull something out that's fun. I think it's worth paying attention to the Brazilian team. If he's going to pull out like Tristana Top, Tom Kent, Rumble, Olaf is something that he picked a few times this year. Um, it'll be fun. Tin Owns, I guess, is maybe one of the best, if not the best, Brazilian player of all time. Um, I'm going to guess he's second behind BRTT, but that would make him the top mid. So that's interesting. Um, Isaris. Isaris, I'll say it's probably Seiya. Um, similar reason. Uh, Seiya apparently is the most um, winningest player in Latin American history. Um, so Seiya ends up up there. Um, Detonation Focus, me, DFM. I'm going to say Steel. Yeah, I'm going to say Steel. And then I'm going to say Arthur for... Chiefs. Um, similar reasons for both. Uh, they are carry-oriented junglers at 1v9 the game. We're seeing Arthur do it in Champions Q, and it's fun to watch. It reminds me a lot of River and how River carried Dignitas, carried PSG, and things like that. So honestly, why not, right? It's possible that it could happen again. Arthur's a little older as is Steel, but at the same time, does this propel them an opportunity to get into maybe the LEC? Or, I mean, Steel, LJL. Steel is not going to leave the LJL. But Arthur might see himself with an opportunity at the LCS. You know, who knows? Um, so those are two players I think that are interesting. I'm not really too in on everybody else on those teams. Um, DFM's kind of boring the way they play. And honestly, uh, Chief... I've seen Reyes play before. Um, outside of Reyes, Tally and Topoon really don't do it for me. Neither does Aladoric. Um, the other minor region team is Holy Phoenix's team, Istanbul Wildcats. Holy Phoenix, of course. I mean, is this his last go? Probably not, given how Istanbul just seems to somehow always go to these international events, but maybe it is. So, you know, take it for what it is. One of the better minor region 80 carries ever. Um, one of the most winningest. One of the most respected. Um, definitely a 1v9 player. Holy Phoenix will be fun to watch. Um, PCS teams. PCS teams. Let's think. CFO, we have Rest. Rest is fun. Um, Gemini Mission, Sean, oh, Koala. So, I 
I guess my board might be a little more players than I actually am going to really be. I mean, how can you pay, pay attention to all this at once, right, I guess? Um, but making sure I'm still on the board, it looks like I am. Hopefully I'm not. If you didn't notice the second video yesterday that I went over my game length, I didn't have 100 Thieves on it at all. Um, I put in the description, if people saw and tried to call me out in the comments, I'd be like, ha, you didn't read the description. Um, you thought you caught me, but I caught you. So, um, Koala, older player. I think he's 27 years old. This might be his last go. So for that, he's on here. Rest as well. Um, Rest is one of the better top laners in the PCS, actually. Um, the best from what I understand. And his NAR play was awesome. So I'm interested to see if he can follow that up and give it, be you know competitive in Group D. Um, as far as Beyond Gaming's concerned, it's kind of only um, Waco. Almost just knocked down all my markers, huh? That would have been great. I would have been in a situation where do I edit this out? I can't edit it out, but all my markers are on the floor. So Waco, um, carry, 1v9 player like Holy Phoenix. So let's see what he can do. Let's see if he can do what Doggo did last year. Obviously a little older, and I don't expect him to do what Doggo did, but um, that is the bar that's set, right? So... That is what it is. I, I mean, he is the player to watch in that case. Um, VCS, what do we got here? We got Kaya, Kiea. We got Levi. Katie, man, this champion pool is fun. Um, bot laner is Style and BA. So we have... Can you see, I, I really am interested to see what Gam does in Group C. Um, because there is some randomness here. Kiea is a really good player, apparently, at the rest level. You saw him high up in my power rank, my top lane rankings, if you missed them. Levi has a champion Ocean. Katie has a champion Mariana's Trench of champions. Like, it doesn't end. And BA won the MVP for that uh, uh, VCS finals, apparently, and was second. Um, in voting for the uh, summer split. So in that case, it's all about style, I guess, which is unfortunate, but at the same time, I mean, it is what it is. And why would you say, well, what about the other VCS team? Well, the other VCS team is um, Saigon Buffalo and Shogun. And Shogun is going to be super fun to watch. Now with Fnatic without a bot lane. They have Bean and they have Rocks. We are looking at a situation where, honest to God, my predictions are coming out later today. Um, or they came out earlier today. I don't know which order I'm going to upload them yet. Um, but Shogun in Vietnam and Saigon Buffalo have a chance to not only knock out Mad Lions in the third, fourth matchup, but then can go and knock out Fnatic. And that would be just glorious. No offense to European fans, European fans that don't dog North America. Um, I'm sorry that you have fans in your region that dog North America for some reason, but uh, that would give you three teams that never made it out of plans, and NA never did that. Sure, NA goes 0-6 against G2 at MSI, or TSM goes 0 and 6 at Worlds, but they never, ever have lost in plans. Watch EG's gonna lose right now, in before it happens. Um, so Shogun's here. Watch it's gonna happen. EG's gonna be knocked out instead of Fnatic. And I'm saying it right now, it could happen. Huh? Gotcha. Oh look, he said this, and look, EG ended up doing it. Well, well I said it, so I already I, I beat you to it. Um now, so that's all done. Um, LCS teams, we got Cloud9. What do I care about Cloud9 for? Um, well, hmm. Um, we're going to go with Blabber.
Blabber and Berserker. So Blabber, one of the best North American players at the tournament. Uh, maybe the best North American player. There's not many of them, so maybe he's just the best. Um, people are going to say, why don't you have Jensen on there? You had him so highly ranked. Jensen plays a boring style of game that doesn't get him screwed over. So uh, not all that fun to watch. Um, and it ain't about what's fun. It's about what wins. Um, and then we have Berserker. Um, I am excited to see how he does against Guma. Um, whether that's a win or a loss, I'm still excited by it. I'm excited how he can grow throughout this tournament. It'll be a big deal for North America. It'll be a big deal for league esports in general. Um, big for everybody involved. Um, just something that I really, really am interested in. Um, EG, we have Inspired and JoJo Pune. Inspired LCS MVP, one of my favorite junglers to watch. Um, I love him in a carry meta. He is great. He's fantastic. Top five in the world in that meta. Right now, going into this event, I had him top five, right? Um, I believe I had him fifth, maybe sixth. Um, Jojo Pune, youngest player at the tournament, youngest player at MSI. Can he take the next step? He's looking good in Champions Q right now. It would be great if he can take the next step. It would be massive for League of Legends. It would be massive for North America. It's a big deal just alongside Berserker. I am excited for it. I really hope he shows up. Um, 100 Thieves don't have anybody on the board when I think about it. Um, why did I forget 100 Thieves yesterday in my game link video? Because honestly, they are um, very boring. Um, very boring, actually, um, to think about. That team is just so stagnantly boring. Um, I'm not, I'm not even trying to trash them. Honestly, I think if 100 Thieves was in play-ins, they would lose. They would lose. Um, thank God for their sake, they are against Gen G and probably RNG. So, that's the thing. So, um, that's that. Now on to the LEC. We have Rogue. Rogue, we have Trimby. Trimby is who I want to watch. Champion pool it is an ocean. Mariano's trench, willing to pick anything. I would love if he pulled out the Nasus or the Zoe. He automatically gets my All Pro for Worlds when it's done. Like for just having the Cudiones to do that, where a lot of the players don't have those kind of Cudiones. So if he can pull that out and drop the ego, I think everybody has to just respect him regardless of the result. Um, so that's a thing for Rogue. G two, BB. Not really. Yankos. Uh, not really. Um, hmm. The thing is, like, it seems so, like, typical to put caps down. But we know what caps is, right? Um, there's nothing really that interests me about what caps is going to do. He just might, he's just going to play the way he does, which is great. It's, he's a great player. Um, but is there anything in there that I'm going to take away from it and be like, I'm really interested to see what caps does at worlds not so much i'm interested to see what targamus does like trimby with a little more ego he is going to pick some crazy picks and it's going to be fun to watch as he tries to carry flacket across the line um in that group it's going to be great with dom Juan and jdg i think if the meta shifts it is anyone's ball game as far as supports go and who the top support will be in that group um between missing him and Kellen. Um, but it'll be fun. It'll be really, really, really fun to watch. It's going to be a competitive group. The group B is going to be fun. Um, if you already watched my prediction, like I said, if you watched my prediction video or didn't, it's there. Um, and uh, how I feel about group B is in that video. Now, um, they're done. Excuse me, the three seed. Well, now that... Um, ooh, there's an orange marker. Sorry. Um Fnatic, is there anything? Fnatic doesn't interest me either. Upset did, but I don't want to see how Bean does. I mean, I'm going to watch him because I'm going to have to. And obviously because I want to watch League of Legends. But Bean and Rux aren't going to really inspire me much in this tournament. Maybe if they do well in the beginning, it'll be one of those things where, wow, they're doing really well. Let's see how they keep going. But right now, I'm not feeling any certain way about Fnatic. So just one second. Let's go. 
Okay, so Fnatic, I guess I grabbed the orange marker for nothing. Wonder doesn't inspire me. Razark doesn't. Humanoid doesn't. Nobody on that team really does. Um, sorry, the cat. Um, fourth team is Mad Lions. We've got Armut, not really. El Yoya. I like El Yoya. I like Alyoya, Unforgiven, and Kaiser. Um, what do I like about them? Well, Unforgiven is a young player, and I want to see how he does at this event. This is a big moment for him in his career. Um, how will he respond after playoffs? I think that's a good storyline to think about. Kaiser, I think, is a very, very good support that's underrated as hell. And um, in an engaged meta, will be solid. And Alyoya may be the best jungler in the LEC. Um, his, he's very good at carries. Um, I think that he, like Inspired, is very fun to watch. So, El Yoya is on there, and that's that for um, LEC. Now, um, LCK, we have Gen G. Um, Gen G, I love watching Chovy play. Um, and Lahens, because Lahens. Um, Lahens might pull out, pull out a Singed. I'm going to be waiting for that. That'll be fun. Lahens has a deep champion pool, which is great to watch. Chovy, obviously, in my opinion, best player in the world. So I'm going to love watching him every time he plays. Um, T1, we have a few players on here. So people are going to say, oh, you're a T1 fan. No, I'm not. I'm not a T1 fan. I have four players from both GAM Esports and T1. So, can't say I like one more than the other. Um, now, why do I have four T1 players, though, and only two Gen G or, or one Rogue or whatever you may say? Well, um, in the case of T1, Zayas is only 18 years old. How is he going to do at this event? Um, if the meta shifts, how is he going to do maybe as a carry? Can he 1v9 T1 to victory? I think that's compelling to watch. Owner, Lee Sin got buffed. Lee Sin spun. Owner is fun to watch. A young player. See how he develops. Baker, this, is this the last ride? Moment of silence. Just there for his last ride. Caria, second most talented player in the world, in my opinion. Most talented to support. Has a champion, Mariana's Trench. I want to see him play. I hope he shows up. Why isn't Guma on here? Well, I didn't want to put five on here. And to be honest, if I had Guma on here, it would have been slightly negative. Can he show up after a completely non-existent MSI in summer? That I'm not going to put on here. A lot of this stuff is very positive. There's not a lot of negatives on here, I don't think. Do I have anybody negative on here that I'm looking at? Can they step it up after doing terrible? I don't think so. So that's the thing, right? Guma's not going to be on here because I'm not going to dog him and say, oh, well, he did terrible. Can he, can he show up? Like, that's how I'm feeling, but that's not what I'm going to write down. I mean, show him a little respect, right? People that don't show players respect tend to be stuck in promos, tend, usually are pretty lonely, and that's why they lash out. So um, players of interest for Damwon Kia. Well, Canyon and Showmaker... Um, both players in my top five in the world going into summer split. Obviously, that's changed. Um, Canyon being very meta dependent and Showmaker kind of not being there for a while either. But down the stretch, they turned it up and I'm interested to see how they do. Um, obviously, in Group B, it's going to be very fun, um, which is going to lead us to the rest of this board. But um, I'm, it's going to be really fun. It really is. Um, with uh, DRX, we have... Um, I realized this when I was doing my youngest players video.
Zeka and Deft. So Zeka, one of the youngest players at the tournament. He's only like 19 years old. He's a free agent. Yeah. Um, this is big for him. This is big. He had a great summer split. He was my top ranked LCK mid laner or second behind closer. I forget if he was first or second, but he was on there and it took people by surprise. But the fact is the numbers spoke for themselves. Um, he's playing in champions Q. I give him credit. Only the best players choose to play champions Q. Um, now deft. Is this his last ride? Same thing as this guy. Is it his last ride? If it is, moment of silence you're gonna be like why did he just stop and look at the floor with a pause like a, what, what the hell was that it was just kind of like a moment of silence give him a second uh might be death's last go and if it is you know go out with a bang get out of uh plans and make some noise in group c right take out top so rogue and drx move on um huh, that's that's a joke so deft is on here zek is on here LPL, 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 LPL. Who is the fourth seed? It is RNG. See, I've watched RNG and if I put breathe on here, it's almost negative because um, how does he compare to Ben? Like that wouldn't be fair to him, right? Um, so we're going to put Gala down. Can Gala show up again? I guess it's a bit negative. It's not really meant to be negative, though. Um, if the K-Saw comes back, Gala is going to be disgusting. Can he get a pentakill? We're all going to be waiting for it. Gala, great player. Great player. And was a standout at MSI. Was solid during summer. Let's see if he can return to that international form once more. Third place, we have EDG. What's so fun about EDG? Well, we have Viper. Viper is fun. Why don't I have uh, Z? Why don't I have Scout on here? If I have Viper, why don't I have Zhao Hu? Aren't those interesting players? Zhao Hu's more interesting than Scout um, because Zhao Hu's going to go around and make things happen and facilitate, and I like that style of roaming mid laner. Um, I think that's valuable. Scout, pretty standard and very good. I mean, he's very good and he plays a standard style that's a little boring. So, with that in mind, I'm not really all that interested in Scout. But Viper is cracked. So Viper is on the list. Now, when I think of uh, JDG, um, think about the top side. 369 and Kanavi. Two of the best players in their roles. They're going to be on here. Um, very, very fun to watch. And it's kind of funny because I don't have Ruler on here and he's the player that I think is number one in his role. But it's because I just, I don't know, when I think of Gen G, I think more of Chovy and Lahens. Obviously, I think of Ruler. That's not what I meant. But I just, I'm like, Ruler's just very good. Like, he's great. He's great. There's not, like, piz I don't, the Zeri games just don't give me the pizzazz. And I hope he gives me some pizzazz. Never mind. Top lane and jungle. 369, pizzazz. Carries in the top lane, even when it isn't meta, he makes things happen. His gangplank's disgusting. He's a great player. Fun to watch. Kanavi, the only guy trying to carry from the jungle position in a meta where you're not supposed to carry. I give him credit for that. He's got a champion ocean. He is fun to watch. So that's why they're on there. Now I'm going to say to myself, if this whole time I was following a rhythm and I just screwed it up because I have top last when they should have been second to last, JDG should have been last top top okay The trio of carries. Why did I write down the three carries, not TN, the LPL MVP, um, and all that jazz? Okay, so. Wayward, like Zeus, is a carry-oriented top laner, and that is fun to watch. 
It is fun. I cannot wait to see what he does against um, Odo Omne is in for a uh, possible awakening. Um, but how is he going to do against Rest? Well, Rest might be in for an awakening too. Well, what about Kingen? Kingen, I think he was, if I recall correctly, a couple nights ago he was losing to Dokla in Champions Q. If that is, if I, my eyes do not deceive me, that is some, not, that's not good um, for Kingen. So, Wayward is cracked. So, Wayward, I want to see if he can take the next step. Young player, rookie, can he show up in this event? That is big, fun to watch. Knight, second best mid laner in the world. One of the best players in the game. Knight's fun to watch. Jackie Love, one of the best players in the game. One of the best players in his role. He is fun to watch. He has a little bit of int. I don't like that int at all. But is he going to be a player of interest to watch? Yes, because he can make things happen. I would have the shy on here too. He would be fun to watch. I might not like him as a player all that much. I wouldn't want to have him. But some people say, well, why wouldn't you want to have him? He's so good. Well, where is he? He's not here, right? That's because he inted his face off. And you can blame S of M all you want, but the guy got caught recalling in a terrible spot to set the whole game off. And if I was S of M, I would say, screw you. I'm not coming back to top lane after that. But that's beside the point. So, um, that's it. So, Wayward. Why isn't Tian on here? Um, Tian's a great player. Um, one of the best junglers. What, I have him in my top three, right? So he's obviously very good. Um, but at the same time, I just... Uh, his ganks did not... were His ganks were solid, predictable, could have been avoided, but solid. Um, just a very good player. Fills out that team well. That team, he fills out the team well. Just like Doran fills out the team for Gen G. Right? Think about it. The guy that just kind of fills it. He's not, I mean, Tian's got to make things happen. He's the jungler, obviously, but it's the laner setting up the lanes to give Tian an, uh, an opportunity to succeed. At least from my opinion, but I'm no expert. I'm just a, a fan, just like you. So, comment down below with your players of interest. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Become a YouTube member. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord, and thank you for watching.